Veteran payments at risk. The buzz that's going all around. Let's talk about it. Apparently $15 billion, $3 billion for this year, $12 billion for next year that are short and may affect programs, benefits, and payments. People literally stopped at the point of payments because that's one of the best ways to get somebody's attention. So these things have been circulating. It is a very valid argument. So I just want to share some thoughts because the questions have been coming up. Military Tom, Military.com uh, talks about uh, the VA warns Congress that benefit payments are at risk due to projected $15 billion budget shortfall. $15 billion. No matter how you slice this, definitely something is not going according to plan, right? So let's see exactly what we're talking about. Some highlighted things. An increase in benefit claims driven by the PAC Act crazy concept could leave the VA benefits accounts of $2.9 billion short this year. Meanwhile, health care accounts could be nearly $12 billion short next year because of higher than expected staffing, prescription drug costs, among other factors. So very first and foremost, just because someone filed the claim doesn't mean, oh, see exactly, here's the point. Negative. This is a process of how the wheels of government works. In a statement on Thursday, the VA said it's working with the White House and Congress to address the budget shortfalls in a way that doesn't harm veterans. So it's not like, oh my goodness, payments are stopping. They're not stopping. They're saying, hey, we are projecting a shortfall. We are spending more than we anticipated to do that. And regardless of who may have missed the thing or whatever, the point at hand is a lot of things are at play. We continue. Right now, due in large part to the historic, there's a Spanish part, PAC Act, the VA is delivering more care and more benefits to veterans than ever before. So we're getting more veterans involved. When people say, oh, you're taking benefits from somebody else. No, you're not. Because guess what? If they need more, they go get more. This is how it works. I'll continue here. Uh, not only have your, and this is now Chairman Mike Bose, who's at the top of the picture there, which we've all seen all over the place here, kind of scratching his head like, you know, how did you guys fool are this, right? Not only have your chief financial officers thrown out dollar amounts requested for many key accounts, they've abandoned many of the estimates and projections that underpinned their budget. This is not fiscal mismanagement. It is strategic whiplash. We'll cover it. So $193 billion of benefits is what they expected to have used. Now, there's a process of how these things work. I have a background in government and contracting and different things, so I understand a little bit of kind of how this works. But I want to just walk this real quickly through. I always talk about these things in our classes, talking to veterans, and I always bring up one of these figures here, which I'll zoom into because it, it makes a point for all of this, right? I harp on the fact that you're not taking benefits from somebody else. These are the statistics. We have 18 million veterans, 0.3. We have 5.7 million veterans receiving benefits, of which 1.3 million are receiving 100% disability benefits. Now, this is a key. Where does this come from? Well, these things actually come from budget requests and things that the VA has in place. So when it comes to the figures I just shared, that comes from an annual benefit report. And this annual benefit report has all the statistics and numbers of everything VA related, right? This is a benefit report. But why would there be a benefit report? Because that benefit report actually is also tied into a budget submission. And in this budget submission is when they're asking for funds. So when you look at the last point we made over here, specifically looking at the $193 billion that they were expecting, you literally see that right here. 193, right? So they're requesting funds, but they're saying, hey, wait a second, this is not exactly going to cut it. So this is the March 2023 road up thing for 2024 fiscal year. Fast forward, same thing's going on now. They just put one forward and they're identifying, hey, we're going to be shorting kind of, uh, falling kind of short here for key expenditures. So I bring these things up because when we're having these conversations, again, another article, Federal News Network, VA says, Chief says, increased outreach and utilization drove massive budget shortfalls. McDonald told reporters Tuesday, 2024 shortfalls lies chiefly with veterans benefit administrations and mainly driven by VA outreach campaign, urging veterans to file for benefits they've earned. Not saying stop it, but saying, hey, more veterans are doing what they're supposed to do, so we need some more money. He said similar situation led Congress to increase the BB's authorization level towards the end of 2023 as well. Hold on for a second. 
He said a similar situation led Congress to increase the BVA's authorized funding level towards the end of 2023 as well. Back to the previous documents, which means that before that, these things have happened already. This is the process that the government uses as a mechanism to be able to understand what's needed. And again, yes, definitely somebody messed up. You didn't project things. Shortfall, I get it. Not covering a thing at all, right? We anticipate producing somewhere near uh, north of 2.5 million claims this year, but because we're performing and producing at such a high level, so the workload, et cetera, we need to raise the authorized level one more time. Benefits paid under compensation and pension claims, as well as increased utilization of readjustment benefits, including GI Bill, Veteran Readiness Employment Benefits as well. They have here a 27% increase in new enrollees from last year, so people are getting more care. Good thing. I kept calling, I kept telling Congress during the course of the year that we believe we had the funding we needed, but if we needed more, that we would come back. I also said I would not stop outreach and will continue to allow our local leaders to make strategic hiring decisions as they've done so, and we readjusted our full-time equivalent goals, etc., and other articles that are out here, similar things as well. Moral of the story is this. This is the game of the government. They're saying, hey, we project there's a cliff down there. We're going to kind of fall short. We've had this happen before. We're asking for it again. And, I, and again, it's sensational news. It gets the click because when you see an article that says, VA urges lawmakers to approve $15 billion to fund budget gap or risk delays and cut better, better in benefits and care or things like VA outreach utilization drove massive budget shortfalls or saying things like Congress is being warned that benefit payments are at risk. Well, that's going to get your attention. And by doing that, we all get up in arms and the newscasters and all the things happen and the wheels begin to move and the coffers open up and begin to give out monies. This is part of the game of government. Payments are not stopping overnight. They are aware that there is a shortfall. They didn't just wake up and say, oh crap, we didn't get paid. What happened here? Somebody missed a deadline or something. No, they are aware of these things. It hasn't, it has happened before as we saw even last year. So it's good that we're talking about this. It's good that we continue to seek out our benefits and what we're due, because guess what? At the end of the day, Back to the statistics and numbers. If we understand what these numbers are and how many veterans are here, more veterans begin to look for their benefits. More transitioning service members begin to get the things they're due. And if the VA needs more shekels, guess what they'll do? They will go ahead and ask for that thing. So this is part of the game of government. Again, they will go ahead and, as it says here, they'll just request for some more. So, yeah, for sure, there is some shortfall. For sure, people whose full-time job is to do these things, all the things, I got it. But sometimes, I'm just saying here, you know, because nobody's really watching this stuff right at this point of the video. But sometimes, if you want to get things to move a little bit faster, you kind of get the news involved. And then you get the emotions out there and you get these eye-grabbing titles that get everybody in arms and everybody starts going crazy and then constituents and so forth begin to pressure their elected leaders and monies get found and we move on. It always happens. Budgetary things, government shutdowns, blah, blah, blah. If we can find billions and billions of dollars to send to other countries, they'll find $3 billion for this year and the other $12 billion for next year. Again, don't sleep on it. For sure, make noise about it. But things are not stopping, so do not take your already rated anxiety to the next level. This is DP with VNCC. If you stuck around this long, I appreciate you. We'll continue talking about this and monitoring it as it comes up. Facts and numbers. Gotta love it. The business of government.